Good morning and welcome back to Morning Express. We're glad you're watching. We have about 20 more minutes to go on the show this morning. And my guest is one who has many caps. I want to run you through them. He's Dr. Ron Archer. He's a best-selling author. He's a business executive, NFL consultant, military leadership consultant, corporate leadership trainer, presidential advisor, TV pundit, envoy to Latin America, Africa, Europe, and Korea. And the list goes on. What an amazing man you are. Well, guys. God's mercy and grace makes it all possible. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm excellent. Good. Thank you for joining us. And how are you? I'm so blessed I can't stand it. You can't stand I'm, it? I'm overwhelmed. I can share some of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can my cup runneth over. It. Yeah? Yeah. It's so good to meet you. And uh, my producer was telling me a little about you. But share with our viewers your journey because from birth, even before you came to earth, it yes. was one that perhaps you were not going to make it. Why is that? Yeah, my mother was a prostitute mm -hmm. and she got pregnant when she was 16 and we call it having a trick baby. You have a woman who's turning a trick, she gets pregnant and nobody really wants a trick baby and so I was born premature and I had no pancreas, I had learning disability, I stuttered and her pimp at the time wanted to just kill me because she couldn't make any money being pregnant. Yeah. And so they gave her drugs, they put hangers up her body and you name it. But I tell you something to your viewers, what God has blessed, nobody can destroy. Yeah. No weapon formed against you shall ever prosper. If God be for you, who can be against you? So I was born, but against all the odds. I was a stutterer, I was a bedwetter, I had been raped with a broomstick. And when you get molested as a child, there's four rules. Don't talk, don't trust, don't feel mm -hmm. and pretend nothing is going on. Yeah. And that's where I was. I was a mess. So if you ever think that your life is in a mess, I'm going to tell you, though, without a mess, there can be no message. Wow. Where there's no pain, there's no power, no yeah. wounds, no wisdom. So my life was as, as low as you could get. When I was 10 years old, I took a gun, put it to my head, and tried to kill myself because I just wouldn't live anymore. The pain was too great. The suffering, the shame, the absolute degradation. Yeah. But the gun had a safety. I couldn't use it. But my life was changed by a teacher who saw the power of God to change lives and taught me a scripture that changed my life. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, right. I knew you. And before you came forth, I set you apart to be a prophet to the nations. Everything that scripture said, I was a stutterer, a bedwetter, a trick baby. God took from the outhouse to the White House by his mercy and grace. I'm here to tell people, I don't care how bad it is. Hang on. Help is on the way. Amen. <laughs> Preach. <laughs> well, I, I like doing that. I'm oh, telling yeah. you. That's why I'm alive. That's why God spared my life. Yes. To let people know it's not what you've gone through. It's where you're going to be going. That everything you have gone through in your life is a down payment on your destiny. So wow. don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit. Don't hate your life because what you've gone through, people need to hear your story, your testimony, your journey. Not just pedantic nomenclature and academic jargon, but from your heart. Yeah. What have you gone through, man, woman? Tell us about it. And that sets people, the Bible says, they shall overcome by the power of their testimony. See, we want to be quiet and be ashamed and not talk. Everything's fine. Yeah. I'm wonderful. And all hell's breaking loose in our lives. We got to get real and share with each other how we made it through. Mm. And I love your voice. Somebody who was watching, perhaps just leaning back, is all up now <laughs> and listening to this Well, you this know, morning. being a stutterer, yeah. I had to work really hard to work on elocution. So I had to say phrases like, the sea ceaseth and it sufficeth us and proper preparation prevents poor performance and possible punitive punishment. So what I'm saying to you, what may be a weakness today can be your strength tomorrow. tomorrow. If you are anything worth doing, it's worth doing poorly at first until you master it. So we'll talk about some of the things you've mentioned, but first, your mother trying to abort you several yeah. times. After you came on this, Seth, at what point did you realize you were an unwanted child initially? At what point did you then start to struggle with the fact that you're down here and you're facing all these issues as a child? When did that come to your attention? When this woman took a broomstick and raped me with it, and when you get violated like that, you think, why am I here on this earth? Mm -hmm. There is no hope. We, we weren't a Christian family. We didn't go to church. There was no God. There was no Bible. We simply just lived from day to day trying to exist. So there was despair. There was hopelessness. So if you are in a place right now where you feel low and you feel abandoned and you feel betrayed and you feel unwanted, I know what that's like. I know how that feels. It's a feeling of suffocation. It's a feeling of feeling invisible that nobody cares about you yeah. that you have no purpose you have no hope i understand that firsthand 
did you get to then have a relationship with your mother? Oh, absolutely. No, we're best friends today. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I led her to Christ. I baptized my mother. I became a pastor at 23. She came to my church, got saved. The whole family got saved through my ministry. But I'm trying to tell somebody out there, you can be the one to change your entire family. You. Yeah your ministry, your job, your education, your life, God can use you to turn a generational curse into a generational blessing. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. When I was 10 years old, I had a gun to my head. When my son was 10, he was aboard Air Force One with me and the president eating presidential M&Ms, wearing a presidential jacket, sitting in the presidential seat on Air Force One in the Oval Office thinking this was normal. He had no idea where his dad came from. He knows now, but it just shows you God can flip it. Overnight, faith, love, inspiration, and power flip. God can turn not just you around, but your entire family around yeah. if you give them your pain. So talk to us about how you got there. Which president first did you advise? And how is it from this miserable background to then being in the White House and advising the president of the most powerful country in the world? People are people. It doesn't matter if they're presidents, prime ministers. They still want to have vision and purpose. These are brilliant people. I mean, they're intelligent. They're bright. They're under stress all the time. And what you learn mm -hmm. is that you're either a diamond or a pipe under pressure. Under pressure, a pipe will burst and leak, but a diamond gets stronger, more brilliant, and more priceless. And these people that I've worked with are diamonds. They take the pressure and make it power. They take pain and make it wisdom. They have the capability to understand that they're here by divine design to shine. And they have this something, this genesis qua, this existential esoteric sense of destiny Ooh. that gives them a sense of can do no matter what happens. Yeah. So which president did you advise? Uh, I've worked with Clinton, I've worked with Bush, and I've yeah. worked with Obama. How was that? It's fascinating. I mean, first of all, you walk in the Oval Office and it's humbling. You know, all the history, all the pageantry, the eagle, all the different, the carpet is so thick you sink down. And then all the people, all the Secret Service are around. Get on Air Force One. I mean, it's, it's historic. It's, it's overwhelming at first. But as you get to talk to them, they're just regular people. Yeah. I mean, they just want their families to be safe. They really want to bless the country, as your president does. And so you become a person that listens a lot and offers perspective. What do you advise them on? Be themselves. It's better to be a true original than a cheap copy. And understand that people first must believe that you believe before they'll believe. You can't fake it till you make it. And the president on top of the mountain did not fall there. And listen to the little people. You can learn from everybody, not just your top advisors, not just PhDs, not just the corporates, but you can learn from an elderly woman. Matter of fact, there's a woman in my life named Mama Frida who's turning 65 years old. Hi, Mama. Happy birthday to you, baby. Love yeah. you. Yeah. So to be themselves, to listen to the people. Yes. And always remember, small people. always remember, yeah. you're there to serve. Dr. King said, it doesn't take a PhD to serve. Right. This is a heart of love. You don't have to have your noun and verb agree to serve. You must not understand the second law of thermodynamics to serve. You don't need to understand Nietzsche's law of Aristophanes, Euripides, and Cleisthenes, and Pericles to serve. All you need is a heart of love and say, I'm here to help somebody get better. If you're in pain, find somebody who's worse off than you and serve them. The old saying goes, I cried when I had no shoes till I saw a child who had no feet. It can always be worse. You're an animated speaker. Are you always like this? Do always. You, always have mo you don't have moments you're sad, you're having a bad day, you're just like, yeah, I'm okay. Do you always... I'm always up, girl. Woo! It's time to do something. At hey, midnight, at 3 a.m. At midnight, 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> I'm, just... I'm always ready to go. Hey, listen, who cares if the horse is blind? Load the wagon, we can make it. Let's get in the road boat, let's chase Shamu, and bring the tartar sauce with you. Let's have lunch today. Yeah, you know why? Because wow. life is a journey. It's an experience to be embraced, not to be feared. I've never met another like you. And you never will. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm just sitting here and taking it all in as yes, well. Yes, yes. So talk to us about some of the books. I'm holding two here. Yes. There's uh, Teamwork Makes the Dream Work. None of us can be greater than all of us. Nobody gets to greatness by themselves. You right. need two people in your lives. You need a mentor, somebody who says, you can make it. Come on, don't give up. And a tormentor. Get off your butt and get going. So you need two kinds of people in your life. Yeah. A mentor 
and a tormentor. I'm typically both. I can love yeah, you. I'd like you as a tormentor. Oh, man. Tormentor. That's right now. Yeah. I'm going to get you up to the mountaintop. I'll get you there. Okay. Yes. And then there's Trick Baby. That's but my then, life story. That's yeah. my journey through my ex experience, how God really turned my life around and gave me a sense of purpose and destiny. I'm still a stutterer. I just don't do it. Because I practice. Not, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, so how do you practice? I have to work on what is called elocution and what I call visualization affirmation. Every morning I get up, I speak clearly and slowly. I am not a stutterer. I have to affirm to myself every single day how to overcome these things that I go through. And you know what? As a man thinketh in his heart, so he becomes. So is he. Life and death is in power of your own tongue. So I refuse to give in and also over enunciate the inconsonant sounds of my words. Wow. Yeah, man. I wouldn't so, let my disability hold me back. No yeah. way. So you're giving out three copies of each book. So That's right. Get tweeting, everybody, if Come you on, want you a copy. You tweet a good tweet. We'll, we'll get you yeah. something good. Yeah. Tweet me if you want one of this or the other. I'm I'll sign them, them for you. And you'll sign them. I will sign them with Excellent. my own handwriting. Excellent. So there you go. Um, the, the two books, there are actually three of each, so six in total, giving them out. Uh, Dr. Ranacha this morning with us. So what is it in life that ever puts you down? Like just a low moment. Talk to me about any time you have when I challenges. See, when I see How do you overcome? Being, when I see somebody being abused, an elderly person being mistreated, a child being raped or molested, or what happened, you know, if there is some kind of terrorist act where innocent people are hurt. I know what it's like to be hurt when you're innocent. So that, it, it disturbs me, but it also motivates me. Mm -hmm. But I got to make a difference. I believe that all of us are teabags. You don't know how strong you are till God put you in hot water. Not to harm you, but to be able to allow you to be unleashed. That's why we started this ministry here in Nairobi called House of Champions. We are mobilizing one million young people to serve the elderly, to serve the poor, to clean up neighborhoods, to let them understand when you serve, you get the right to lead. So every Friday night in Nairobi Cinema at 6 o'clock, we get all the young people together, young adults. We talk about sex. We talk about real issues, drugs. We talk about abuse. We talk about real issues, and we empower them. We teach them. We love them. We heal them and send them out to serve. One million young people serving this nation. Ask not what Kenya can do for you, but ask what you can do for Kenya. And that, that is our yeah. goal. And that is your goal. Yes. Um, and as far as... You're in Kenya now for how long? Until God calls me home. This is home for me now. I'm home. This is it. Oh. I've moved here. How long have you been here for now? Buona Sofia. I'm here. <laughs> this is it, man. Before. I've been here for four months, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm a professor at USIU. I'm a pastor of two campuses, House of Champions, downtown Nairobi Cinema on Friday at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I'll be host of some, some shows. I do a lot of consulting work with Safaricom and Coca-Cola. So I'm involved in everything. I'm Our president has nation. not given you a call. I got a call from the State House. But, oh, yeah? you know, yeah, I'm going to get there. And, and, what do and, they say? Uh, you know, pray for us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot uh, you need to give them more than prayer. There's uh, a lot happening with us. Security. And, and, you know, the Bible says, pray for your leaders. Yeah. Pray for those that are ahead of you. And I pray for the president, his family, because God put him there and God bless him because, you know, it's easy to criticize, but it takes tremendous strength to lead the nation. What do you make of security right now is on the front in terms of the conversations you're having as a country? That seems to be getting out of hand. Well, Watching you know, events as so far that you've been in the country. Understand there is no such thing as perfect safety. I live in America, right? I used to live in America. I'm here now. But America has the biggest military arm. We can blow up a mosquito on Mars. But we still have terrorist things happening in our country. Kids going and shooting up schools. People going but into theaters. But it doesn't theaters. happen on the frequency we are seeing some of these things happening here. They happen a lot in America. They just don't tell you about it okay. because they... they <laughs> block the news. Trust me, it's going on every single day. Somebody's getting blown up, somebody's getting shot. America, everybody has a gun. Even the birds have guns. Everybody has guns in America. Everybody's getting shot by something. Man, are you kidding me? So it goes on. But what happens, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. There's no, you have to balance security with freedom of expression. There is no perfect place. Look at Israel, one of the best militaries in the world. There's always something going on there. Bombs are coming over, explosions happening. This is the price of freedom. It's hard, but we're not gonna give up. We're gonna be resilient. We're gonna keep fighting it. But there, you know what, I tell people, listen to me. Let me tell you something for real, y'all, listen to me. No matter how safe you live life, nobody gets out of life alive. So live your dreams and not your fears. You can die in the bathtub, sip on a piece of soup and bust your head wide open. So you can't live life full of fear. I live my life 
my people say you can't go to Africa. See, Americans are kind of funny. We think yeah, Africa we saw one of the pastors there talking about you can get HIV by using some of the towels in Kenya. It was insane. Well, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. They can be stupid too. And they, yeah, you know very what I'm saying? stupid. That's right. <laughs> hey, I always tell people, you think carbon is as expensive, try the cost of ignorance. Okay, that's just an ignorant statement. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. The reason why we have your inspiration on Monday is because many people wake up with the Monday blues thinking, oh yes. God, my life, this and the other. What do you tell those people that right now have lost the steam in their life, that are not driven, that still are down here? Because many are dying. Yes. You know, Miles Mundro. Yes. Dying just I call it getting promotion. Promotion. He got promoted. Yes. His job was over. God said, come up higher. Yeah. He got promoted. To so be what, absent from the body's what, present with the Lord. Yeah. What do you tell this group of people? What yeah, I, first of all, understand people. there are two laws in the universe. One is called the law of gravity. Gravity is things that hold you down. Maybe you got financial problems, you got marital problems, you got health problems, things that keep you down, that keep you stuck. And you feel like, I can never make it, I can't get there, I'll never have any money, I won't have any kind of love relationship. First of all, you got to change this thinking, thinking. Yeah. you got to stop affirming what you don't want. Stop saying your fears and your doubts and quit living those things you don't want to have. But there's a greater law than gravity. You know what it's called? The law of aerodynamics discovered by Sir Isaac Newton when the apple hit him on the head. Have you ever thought about how does a 20,000 ton plane with stay people... Stay up there. How does, get off the ground. Forget about stay up there. Yeah. How does it break the law of gravity? Because because there's a greater law called the law of aerodynamics, the law of lift. But the only way, here's the secret. Let me tell you a secret, not between me and you, nobody else. The secret to greatness, the secret to breakthrough, the secret to rise above your depression and your pain is guess what? In order for a plane to get off the ground, mm -hmm. it can't fly away from the storm. It has got to turn the nose right into the storm, fly into it, and when the wind goes over the wings, you get lift and you rise above it. You can't run from your problems, you can't run from your past, you can't run from your fears. You gotta turn your plan around with your nose, face it, go straight at it, and the way that you are designed, you will rise above it. Trust me, when David saw Goliath, he ran toward him, he beat him and got promoted to become king. Don't run from it. Face it. You've got to have courage. It. I'm sorry? You've got to have courage. You've got to have courage. You yeah. have to have faith and courage to understand you are here by divine design to shine. You are designed to win and not you are a champion. The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. If God before you, who can be a, you a bad thing. You know you know you good. You know oh, you good. Oh, hallelujah. You know you good. We need to have you here every Monday. Well, let's make it happen. <laughs> I'm trying to tell these people. They know they're good. <laughs> Everything you've been through is a down payment on your destiny. Don't lay down. Let me tell you a secret. Failure is never final. It's not the falling down. It's the staying down. When life knocks you down, land on your back. Because if you can look up, then you can get up. So don't you ever give up. Amen. Quitters never win and winners never, never quit. Never quit. And that is the take home. You know, one of the things and spirituality is what many people will resort to when they're struggling yes. and going through a lot of hard sure. times. But we ran a story just the other day just showing some of what church is becoming. Yes. A money minting business. Mm. So many people going there hoping to get encouragement. Yes. To go on with life and be this great things that you're talking yes. about. Yes. Are then going and being, you know, taken advantage of. Being, being cheated. Being hurt. Yes. And being robbed in yes. essence. Yes. What does yes. church become and what do you say to those people like yourselves that are pastors and preachers but many of them it's focused on money well let me say this first of all uh, I'm praying for all those churches and pastors and people that God will show his mercy and grace for those that have been hurt to turn that pain into power and I also pray that the Bible says, if a person is caught in the sin, ye that which are spiritual restore such a one in the, in the spirit of meekness and in truth but to understand this as well do, do you read about accidents on the freeway all the time? Do, do, do people crash their cars and have drunk drivers? Yeah. Yeah. So do you stop driving? No. Do planes crash in the sky? Yeah. Do you stop flying? No. Right. Do people get sick at restaurants? Yes. Do you stop eating? No. Come on now. So life happens to everybody in every situation. There's no such thing as a perfect church. If there's a perfect church and I go there, it just became imperfect because I'm not perfect either. But the fact remains, things are going to happen. But let me tell you something, what Job said. Everything I go through Mom Frieda, remember this? Job said, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I want to tell you something. What Nietzsche said this, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Okay. So don't give up and don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. We're going to have difficulties in every part of life. But don't label everything's being bad because one car crash, I'll never drive again. A plane crash, I'll never fly again. Somebody got sick, I'll never eat again. That doesn't happen. We have to adjust, adapt, 
and overcome. Life is not for the faint of heart. You got to be strong. You got to be a climber. You got to be a diamond and not a pipe. Oh, there you said it's it. The, give me some. Give me some. There you All go. Right. <laughs> Jeff Cornanga is watching and saying, smoke Oh, my. Oh, my. I was on oh the show. We had fun. Me and Jeff had a good time, I man. can imagine. Anybody oh, would goodness. have fun with you. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Well, I, I think well, so. I'm, I'm Are you married? You know what? There is a significant somebody who's out there. Uh huh. Hi. You know who you are. Hello. <laughs> Girlfriend. Love you. Oh, uh, pretty soon to be to be engaged. Oh. Oh yeah. I can't tell right now, but she's out there. She knows she, who she is. She knows. I she's love watching. you, baby. Oh, okay. Oh, you make me melt like butter. <laughs> <laughs> So an engagement coming soon. Yeah, I'm announcing sometime, you know, down the road. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's coming along. Because nice. many people say there are no good men out there, not enough of them. That the, the, the good ones are here's taken. Here's the problem. You got to stop chasing after a man. The woman that I'm going to marry, she prayed for two years, had a list of what she wanted. And it's, what you got to do, chase after God and the man will find you. Quit chasing after people. Quit chasing after money. Jesus said, if you try to find yourself, you lose yourself. But if you lose yourself, you find yourself. David said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. What does that mean? It means it will chase you down. Mm -hmm. You fall in love with God. Chase after God. Quit chasing after this fella. Get in love with God and God will touch that man's heart and make him the right one just for you. You got to kiss a lot of frogs till you find your prince. Hang in there. And also for the men finding women, they'll complain they're not cooking. Let me tell you what I tell they're young not, men. Let me tell you what I tell you know, They're too busy with work and school. You know what? Men, you will always lose money chasing women. You will never lose a woman chasing money. So keep your business right and she'll come to you. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Yeah. It's a dog Focus. good one. Yeah, focus. That's it, man. Work. That's right. The money will... Developing yourself. <laughs> Make yourself attractive. Be a man of substance, a man of education. Can I tell you something? Please, it's very important. Yes. Please educate yourself. You know why? Listen to me. It's the secret of life. If you lose your house, you can buy another one, right? They can take it from you. Yes. They'll take your house. They can take your car. But once you get an education in your mind, they don't repossess that. That is yours until the day that you die. Why? The more you learn... The more you earn and the more you know, the more you financially grow. Get as much education as you can. A's equals cash. Yeah. A lot of people find themselves in situations where they're doing what they'd not preferably be doing right. every other day. Right. You're doing what you love. I'm doing what I love. Yeah, passion. Those, yes, passion. What they have passion for. But many are doing it just to make that one extra back, one shilling, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, what is it? do you tell these people in these situations? Well, sometimes you have to start small. You have to do, I mean, I used to clean toilets. I used to work at a greenhouse. I used to be a butler when I was a young kid doing cleaning people's houses. So sometimes you got to start off with humility. David was a shepherd boy before he became king. So you work on your job while you plan for your dream. So in essence, you make a living, but you plan to live your making. Yeah. So do it part time. Do what you love. Maybe you got to do something now to pay the bills. But don't just stay there. Start your dream part time. Do it small. Remember, incremental improvement is better than perfection postponed. I started speaking for free in schools when I was in high school. Before I knew it, corporations started hiring me. Before I knew it, I wrote a first book. Before I knew it, I became a global consultant. It's called step by step by step by step by step. Yeah. And there are many who will get to a point where they're like, I keep trying to get myself to a better level to be this better person. But every time I'm almost there, it kind of just boomerangs. I go back down. They're in this vicious cycle in their life. But that's some it's normal. drugs, no, that's normal. some it's whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, different things. But they're just unable to get out of these cycles in their lives, inhibiting them from being the best they can be. First of all, you have to understand that every great person has had multiple failures. Henry Ford, who made the Ford Motor Company, went bankrupt three times. True story. A man was 65 years old, had no teeth, and was bankrupt, was cooking chicken at truck stops. His name was Colonel Sanders. He went to the bank and said, truckers love my chicken. Give me some money. And the banker said, you can't even chew your own chicken. How do you know it's good, old man? He was told, hear me now, 1,099 times he was too old. But you know what? Listen to me. Before you ever have a breakthrough, it's going to feel like a breakdown. But you can't give up. You got to keep pressing. Keep pre Paul said, this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, I press on. You got to keep pressing. You're going to fail. Keep pressing. Get up. Keep. How do we learn how to walk? 
we fell, we fell, we cool. fell, we fell. Then we yeah. learned how to keep our balance. How about riding a bicycle? We crashed, we crashed, we crashed. So don't get upset because you fell. It's going to happen. But be resilient. The ability to bounce back up every time you fall. The Bible says a good person will fall seven times, but he gets up. Every you doggone right. You go down by yourself. That's what joy means, by the way. Happiness means I'm happy based upon what That's happens. Happening. But joy is a sense I was born for a purpose. I was born to do something beyond myself. I was born to serve and to love and to lead. And that joy keeps you resilient even during bad times. We must wind up. Nairobi Cinema, which day is the people is the Friday night, to listen to you? Friday night. Six o'clock. Yes. Nairobi Cinema mm -hmm. called Friday Night Live. That's if right. you like this, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm crazy for you. I want to <laughs> help you live your dreams and not your fears. Six to eight, you'll come there. You'll be hit with power. You'll awesome. be set free. You got to come. Friday night, six o'clock. All right. And you have uh, six books given out today. Tweet me. Uh, something cool something nice something you've picked from today's session uh -huh, these are powerful a learning <laughs> yeah so lesson um so you have teamwork uh, makes uh, the dream work dream work and you have your life journey yes. here as well i must ask you this before we go yes What's your favorite thing about Kenya or place about Kenya? Well, You've the person I'm going to be marrying is here in Kenya. Oh, so she's very, Kenyan. She lives here. And, uh, is so she Kenyan? I'll, she's a beautiful African woman who speaks Swahili. She's beautiful. I just, no, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank oh, you. hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank <laughs> What's you, thank her you. name? I can't say that right now. <laughs> Why not? Because we're doing things a certain way. Humility. Humility. Okay. Thank you, Lord. But you're in love thank with you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> Yes, I am. Thank anyway. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, really, I love the people of Kenya. I yes, do. Yes. Your best days are ahead, Kenya. Your best days are ahead. So don't give up. This country, top 30 place to live in the world is Nairobi. Awesome. Yeah, man. So this is a place to be. That's why I'm here. I'm here because you're great. And yeah. great things are coming. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep, and more importantly, stay unified. Stay together. Yes. Stay together. Dr. Ron Archer, what right, a pleasure. Now. Thank you. My joy. I must come for one of those. Friday night. Friday night. Now, Moby Cinema, Friday 6 night live. <laughs> Friday night live. Oh, right. <laughs> what a show today. <laughs> Jeff, what's your extinguished show? We need it. Oh, my, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching the show today. What an amazing um, few minutes we've had there with Dr. Ron Archer. Such such a powerful speaker and some of the amazing things he said this morning. You can get more of those in his books. Tweet me. Uh, we'll be giving out and tweeting who has gotten them. Always somebody has so who got the books? Yes, I will let you know who the lucky peeps will be. He'll sign them as well. And I hope that's some inspiration for you to get started in your week. If you're feeling low, discouraged, whatever it is, you know, you have it in you to be the best you can be and go on out there. It's not going to be easy, but hey, you can make it worth it. Thank you for watching. I'm Sophia Wanuna. Have a lovely day.